I made a big mistake last week. I I believed that Call of Duty Big Red One was the first Call of Duty on PlayStation in 2005, when in fact it was Call of Duty Finest Hour. In 2004, that was the first Call of Duty on PlayStation, which is in fact 18 years, which is in fact almost 20. So... Sorry, Jim Ryan. <laughs> To catch you up on what's happened since the last delayed input, Disney had a live showcase, Ubisoft had a live showcase, Nintendo had a live showcase, Sony had a live showcase, and as I speak, as I, as I record this very video, Tokyo Game Show is still happening. So for the sake of this 10 minute program, we're just going to talk about good trailers. Which means we will not have to talk about any of that Disney show. We're talking about good trailers, so we don't have to talk about anything from Ubisoft. Welcome to the greatest playground history. We're talking about God of War Ragnarok. We're talking about good trailers. And so you might remember two months ago they had the, the Snow Wolf trailer, the CG one that I wasn't too into. God of War Ragnarok has yet to really do its full blowout here a week into July. It hasn't yet had that iconic trailer moment, the one that drops your jaw. Like, this is something. You know, oh, they got a big wolf in this, but it's not it. And here we are, it's happened. God of War Ragnarok has had its iconic trailer moment. I'm going to play it for you now, just as it appears in the trailer. 16 uninterrupted seconds. Fate only binds you if you let it. Whatever that was, I love it. Whatever that scene was, it's something I've never seen before. It's something I didn't expect to happen. And it's everything I wanted to see happen in the trailer. It's, I have questions, many. And to the editor, I have to give praise because this moment it happens about 75% through the trailer. Everything kind of leads up to this. This moment happens, lets it breathe. Just let it be as it is, and then da 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 after that. This is, it's the heart of the trailer. And I think that if you're making a trailer, if you're making a trailer for a movie or a video game or a TV show, any trailer you're making, the highest compliment a viewer could give you is, oh, I remember that part. That's the most you could, today, that's the most you could ask for. If you can, if you can get your audience to say, oh, I remember that part, you've... You've accomplished what thousands could not. <laughs> There's thousands of trailers trying to get our attention and none can. If you can just get a, a memorable scene. And here we have, like, ask your friend. You remember that part where the boy shoots an arrow at the moon and then a giant wolf chases that arrow, leaving a trail behind that unveils the true sky? Your friend's gonna say, oh, I remember that part. Good job, mission accomplished. So after that, there's just a few quick shots. Beam of light, mermaid, feather tree, jellyfish, uneasy alliance, Thor fight. Title, Thor fight. Excellent, edit. I don't wanna see another second of this video game before I play it. Good trailer. Good trailer. Tekken 8 was officially revealed this week. And this is all there is. A fight between father and son. An engine, two lines of dialogue, a couple of supers, break the chain, title reveal. I'd say it's flat out a better version of the Street Fighter VI reveal from earlier this year. But I wanted to bring up this trailer because obviously there's not that much here to discuss from an editing standpoint or a storytelling standpoint, right? But if you're a fighting game, you don't, you don't need to shoot the moon out of the sky to be a good trailer. You can present your game as it is and that can still be exciting. In this case, it's extra exciting because this is the first next-gen only fighting game we've ever seen. There's something cool about that. Good trailer. Good trailer. As for the Nintendo Direct, they're, they're kind of weird when they come to trailers. Because for, for most of this Direct, 
It's just this one guy kind of explaining things. Now, in this third installment, she'll fight to protect the world from the sudden invasion of man-made bioweapons called homunculi. There really wasn't a whole lot of the show without a presenter or this one guy talking. And to be fair, he has incredible range. Here he is talking about Kirby. To help Magalore return to his home planet, Kirby and his friends set off on an adventure. Here he is talking about Resident Evil 8. Ethan Winters must face the horrors of the village and its four fearsome lords to rescue his abducted daughter. But in terms of big trailers uninterrupted by that guy's narration during this show, there's only a few notable ones, big, big ones. Uh, first, of course, was Fire Emblem Engage, which is kind of a messy, bad trailer. Happy they're showing what the game looks like, but really, once they show this team up with Marth, they're out of interesting things to show. Feel the impact of the final shot of this trailer with me right now. Man, they really think summoning Marth is that cool. Trailer starts with summoning Marth, more summoning Marth in the middle, ends with pushing a door open with Marth. You're gonna need more than that. There's this teaser for Pikmin 4. It's not good or bad. It's just, it's just this thing. It's just a fine teaser. And then of course there's the trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Before this moment in this Nintendo Direct, this game was known as the untitled sequel to Breath of the Wild. It had no release date, so this was its coming out party, and that comes with sort of expectations, especially for a Zelda game, of what kind of trailer that should be, and this is not that. This is low-key. This is restrained. This is not even a good trailer. It doesn't have the iconic shot. It doesn't have breathtaking visuals. It doesn't, it doesn't have a moment you'll remember later, and yet it's a good trailer. Anyone will tell you that. It just has this undeniable quality. It's, it's a trap to critique this trailer. It's like trying to explain to someone that Back to the Future 2 is actually not a good movie. Why would you bother trying? Who are you trying to impress? So this is actually the entire trailer here. Shots of mysterious cave etchings. One, two, three, four, five shots of Link traversing in various ways. A title reveal, release date reveal. It's nothing. But what can we say? It's beloved. There's the four million views. And to be honest with you here, I do think that the context is important. Tears of the Kingdom had its good trailer already. It was the reveal trailer. Mystery. Surprise. Oh, I remember that part. And then delays happened. COVID happened. Delays happened. And the game's taken longer to come out than was originally planned. And so this trailer is just out here saying, like, I'm good. I'm all right. It's been a wild ride, but I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going to show up. I'll be fine. If I have to tell you something today, uh, there is, like, a big dumb bird raft you're going to get, like, 40 hours into the game. So look forward to that. But other than that, see you in May. And that's all that needed to be said at this moment. Good trailer. Good trailer. And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. Another thing I wanted to point out that I liked about that Ragnarok trailer is the choice of intriguing dialogue snippets. So when you're making a trailer, ideally the dialogue that you pick is not absolutely seemingly random. Ideally, you're picking dialogue that is interesting. In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? Ever prayed to you? Can you even imagine that kind of love? That works on me. I'm listening to what's being said. As we've discussed in the past, most video game trailers in the world don't understand this simple concept. Most video game trailer editors will say, as long as a character's talking, that's good enough for me. I'm throwing it in 
regardless of what is being displayed on screen. But I wanted to look at Octopath Traveler 2's announcement trailer in particular. It's got that thing, right, when you're introducing a cast of characters and each of them speaks for a bit to reveal who they are, like... I'm going to become a star and bring smiles to people's faces, just like Mama. And... I need to rediscover who I am. Okay, I don't... I don't think that makes you interesting. But then we have this character called... Particio. I'm hitting the road. I'll be back once I eliminate that devil called poverty from the world. I'm hitting the road. I'll be back once I've eliminated this devil known as poverty from the world. That is so bad. That's so bad, but also good, maybe? I'm still thinking about it. It's something. It's more than I need to discover myself. It's something. But I wonder if they mean it. If the, if Particio means it, we really have something here. Because there's a point in most RPGs, right? Where you've acquired an irresponsible amount of wealth. Just the way that it, like the economics of an RPG work, at a certain point you could have taken this gill back and given it to people who really could need it. Instead, obviously, you want it to buy a slightly better sword. How are you gonna do it with Particio over your shoulder? Like, don't look, Particio, I need plus two attack. And he would say, no, well, that could have fed a family. I'm ashamed of you. Does he want better gear? Particio, I'll buy you a vest. No, I'm all right. Poverty is the devil. <laughs>